Hello, and welcome to another installment of I Am Issachar. If I were to ask you the question, if you considered yourself to be a good person, what would you say? You'd probably say, yeah, I'm a good person. But what would you say if I told you that as good as you think you are, you're really not all that good? Ah, oh, ouch, right? Well, I'm getting that from our passages today. So let's go ahead and jump in. Today we're going to start at Matthew chapter 22, looking at verse 34 through 40. And then I'll tell you where we're going next. Then we're going to go over to Matthew chapter 7, verse 21 through 23. And then we're going to conclude with uh, Matthew chapter 25. Um, and we'll just kind of dabble and deal and, and hang there. But let's start with uh, Matthew chapter 22. But when the Pharisees heard that he had silent the Sadducees, they gathered together. Then one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question, testing him and saying, teacher, which is the great commandment in the law? I need you to catch that. He was a lawyer and he goes, which is the great greatest commandment in the law? Verse 37, Jesus said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Well, why is that important? Well, the Pharisees were the keepers of the law. The Pharisees were the interpreters of the law. Their job was to make sure that everybody was keeping the law and nobody was messing up. They were about the law. So it makes sense that the lawyer of the group of Pharisees would question Christ, correct? And that's why he says, what is the great commandment of the law? But I love it because Jesus, knowing scripture because he is the word, he quotes to the lawyer what is known as the Shema, which is found in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4. As a matter of fact, the Shema says, oh, it says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Watch this. Verse 5 in Deuteronomy chapter 6, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. Basically the exact same thing that he says here, right? He says, this is the first and great commandment. And the second is like it on these two, which he says, you should love the, la the Lord. You should love your neighbor as yourself on these two commandments, hang all the law and prophet. Well, that means that we, we need to take a look at the commandment because that's the, what the lawyer questioned Christ about. Right. And why would Jesus then say on these two hang all the law and prophets? Because when you look at the 10 commandments, the 10 commandments are broken into two parts. The first four of the Ten Commandments deals with our love to God. You know, it says, you should have no other God before me. Don't take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Um, don't make any graven images. Remember the Sabbath, the Sabbath day to keep it holy. All of these, these first four, are all about our relationship with God. But when you look at the last six, the last six deal with our relationship with each other, with fellow man. And when it starts with, um, you should uh, honor your father and your mother, uh, thou should not uh, kill, thou should not commit adultery, thou should not steal, thou should not bear false witness, thou should not covet. I think I'm leaving one out, but you get the point. The, the second half dealt with dealing with one another. And that's why it's important for us to now jump over to chapter seven. In Matthew chapter seven, looking at verse 21, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who, will, who, who does the will of the Father who is in heaven. On that day, catch this word, many will say to me, on that day, many, that's a lot, that's a plethora, that is a multitude of folk, will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not watch this prophesy in your name and cast out demons in your name and do many mighty works in your name? And then I will declare to them, harshest words in life, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of, catch the word, lawlessness. Wait a minute, weren't we just talking about the law? 
weren't we just looking at the fact that it was the Pharisees, the keepers of the law, the interpreters of the law that's questioning Christ and ask what are these commandments? What's the greatest one? And Jesus says, hey, then so we now have to ask then what is lawlessness? Lawlessness is not you just keeping the commandments that deal with God. Lawlessness is when you are not doing right by fellow man. He says that you are the workers of lawlessness. Yeah, sure, you keep the law. Yeah, you're doing all these things. That you're going to church and you're doing all the things that look right. And But what you're not doing is treating each other right. You're not treating your fellow man right. That is how lawlessness is considered. And now, and how do I prove this? I'm glad you asked. That takes us to Matthew chapter 25. All nations, looking at verse 32, all the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate the people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goat. Verse 34, then the king will say to those on his right hand, come you who are blessed of my father. Verse 35, for I was hungry, I was thirsty, I was a stranger, I needed clothes, I was sick, I was in prison and you came and visited me. Then the righteous, verse 37, will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry and, and thirsty and a stranger and naked and sick? And Jesus will say to them in verse 40, when you did this unto the least of these, my brother, you've done it unto me. Now, that's when he responds to the next group, the second group, the, the people who were separated to the left, the goats, and he will say, Verse 41, then he will say to those on his left, depart from me, you who are cursed. Verse 42, for I was hungry, I was thirsty, a stranger, I needed clothes, I was sick and in prison, and you did not look after me. They will also answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger and needing clothes? Verse 45, he will reply, truly I tell you, whatever you did not do for one of the least of these, you did not do for me. That's the lawlessness. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to tell you this quick story. Back in October of this past year, um, I had a dream. It was a really bad dream. I stood before the great throne room of God as the great judge rendered to me my sentence my sentence of guilty. Immediately, I woke up in a cold sweat and in tears. You know, you had one of those dreams that's so real and I'm falling, I'm crying, I'm hurting. I'm like, Lord, and I begin to do the very thing that Jesus said that we would do in Matthew chapter seven. I begin to say, but Lord, didn't I do? Didn't I do this in your name? Didn't I do this in your name? I heard myself saying it, but it was coming out of my mouth. Didn't I do this in your name? And every single time I said, didn't I do this in your name? The sentence came back the same, guilty, guilty. Every single time, I would have you know, this went on all night. It was about midnight when I had the dream, between midnight and two. I contended with the Lord back and forth, all the way up until four o'clock. It was the time of Jacob's trouble for me. Finally, finally at the breaking dawn, at the breaking of day, I hear the Holy Spirit put something in my spirit. And he said, ask him about the day that you accepted Christ. So I said, God, everything you say to me is true. Every time I try to defend myself with what I have done for you, I continue to hear the word guilty. And the matter, the truth of the matter is I am guilty. But God, would you do one more thing as you are reviewing the books? Would you please look for the day when I accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior? Would you please look for the day when I accepted Christ's death and his atonement as my covering and as my sacrifice? Mind you, now it's about six o'clock. The dawn is coming. The dawn is breaking. And it was in that moment that I heard the Lord say to me, go to Mark chapter two, Mark chapter two, verse 11. And I want to read to you what happened in Mark chapter two, verse 11. It was my heart leaped when I read it. I say to you, arise, take up your bed and go to your house. In Mark chapter two, there are four friends who bring their one friend to Jesus. They can't get in the house and they tear off the roof and they lower him down before Christ. The Bible tells us, the Bible tells us in this very room are, it's a big crowd and big crowd. And you know who's there? 
the Bible tells us that there are Pharisees there. There are the keepers of the law there. There are people there who are doing the right thing. They're scribes. And, and, and the Bible tells us that when this man is Lord, Jesus immediately says to the man, verse 5, Son, your sins are forgiven you. The people, the law keepers, have a problem with what Christ has just said. And they begin to go, how in the world can he forgive sins? But Jesus, reading their thoughts, knowing their thoughts, says, why do you reason this in your heart? Verse 8. Verse 9, which is easier for me to say to him, that your sins are forgiven or rise, take up your bed and walk. But that you will know, I love it, let me read it exactly, but that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins, he said to the paralytic. Verse 11, I say to you, arise, take up your bed and go to your house. Ladies and gentlemen, the Lord told me to tell this story. He wants you to know that if you think that by keeping the law, that is going to save you, you are mistaken. If you think that if you're doing these things and didn't I do this in your name, didn't I do this in your name, God is going to say, I never knew you. He's going to pronounce you guilty. The only thing that will give us a, a sentence of being pardoned is if we can say, didn't I accept Jesus as my Lord? Didn't I take his death and his blood and, and, and cover myself with it? Didn't I accept what he did for me? Oh God, that will be the only thing that will pardon. But watch it. As I have accepted Christ, the Bible tells me that there's something that comes with it. Talk about depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. When I accept Christ, then there are certain things that I do. I am kind to my neighbor. I am good to those who do not have. I pour out what God gives to me to others who may not have. Jesus expects us to do certain things when we are professing his name. If we are trying to do it in our own works, it will not work. We will find ourselves guilty before the great throne room and before our great judge, the Lord God Almighty. You know what I'm going to say. Take this pass it forward and share it because it is important that people know that it is only the atoning blood of Jesus that will cover our sins. But with that, when he's looking at lawlessness, remember, it was the law that stood before the man that said, well, who wants Jesus that thinks that he can forgive sins? Law won't save you. Keeping the law will not save you. I cannot stress it enough. Doing these acts for the sake of getting credit, it won't save you. It is only Christ and his blood that will save us. Save us. But here's the deal. With that saving comes responsibility. The responsibility that a lot of us are neglecting right now is in this country, that we're not taking care of those who are less fortunate. And believe me when I tell you, you've heard it right here in the word itself. God's going to keep a record of it and he's going to call it into play. Let's not find ourselves being the ones who are the goats and on the left hand. Lord, thank you for your word. I ask God that it may go forth to do exactly what you have commissioned for it to do. May people be convicted by what they hear. Um, may we make decisions to follow you and make choices to be kind to our neighbors and to do well to those who are less fortunate. And then, Lord, may we claim your blood and your blood alone as our atonement, knowing that it is your blood that saves. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You know what I'm going to ask you to do, by all means? Please send this to someone else. They might need to hear it. This might be the last message that will speak to them so that they can make a decision for Christ. Please, if you've enjoyed this message and the others, hit subscribe and share with others. Thank you so much. May God bless you.